Hello, this video is intended to demonstrate the effects of the ASRock XFAST USB utility on speed. So, let's start with a quick overview. What we're looking at here is Windows 7, 64-bit, and Service Pack 1 on there. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is Device Manager. Okay, you will see we've got more than usual AS Media uh, USB 3.0 controllers. Why is that? Let's start with showing you the version number. There's the device driver I've installed. And why do we have so many? Well, it's because I've added this card. So we've got this card added. We've got the motherboard from ASRock that has ports on there, USB ports and it all uses the same driver. So whether we're talking about High Points website and the driver that's available there or the driver that's available here, it's the same exact bundle. Okay. So that driver has already been installed and whether we're talking about the Asmedia on the motherboard or added, it all shows the same driver version and it all shows the same hardware ID. So the twist in this video is that I really want to see the effect of as media and if it actually works on an added high point, you know, third party USB adapter. Um, okay, let's start with a baseline. So if we run ATTO disk benchmark version 2.47 and we take a look at our drive configuration, we've got a RAID array, four one terabyte drives and an external USB 3.0 enclosure and then the C drive. So we want to make sure we change it to the D drive where we want to perform the test. All right. Next, um, just to show you what else is running in the system, uh, not much. The yes, media driver we talked about. Um, Stream Mega Raid and Realtek driver. Okay. We're ready to click start and I'm going to resume the video once this test is done. But just to keep things clear before I set out to do this, I want you to know what I'm setting out to do exactly. Alright, so what we want to do here is first run the USB controller with the RAID attached to the motherboard, then attached to the high-tech to compare speed, then we'll install XFAST, and now we'll run again. Attached to the motherboard and attached to the high-tech controller. Alright, so let's get started. The video begins as I... Oh, let's make sure we change all that to the right drive letters. Okay, so now we get started. Here's our first run. Okay, I'm going to resume the video after I've done these first two runs to then show you what the install of XFAST looks like. Okay, I've resumed the video. You'll now see the drive disappear and then reappear now that it's finished this first run. So I'll go ahead and um, move it. So right now I'm on the back of the ASRock Z68 motherboard and one of the blue USB ports on the motherboard. And I'm going to move that cable to the added high-tech USB controller instead. Okay, drive disappeared. I'm going to go ahead and put it on port 1. Now the high-tech controller has four different Asmedia USB controllers, so it doesn't really matter what port I used on it. They're all full speed, and the speed should not slow in theory if all four are used concurrently. All right, so now the drive reappears, and now we want to run the benchmark again to see if there's any difference between motherboard-based USB 3.0 speed and added. Okay, I'll resume the video when that's done.
go ahead and minimize this to get that out of the way. Okay, we'll resume the video as it um, is nearly completed here. So next we're going to install XFast. But it looks like the uh, S Media on the motherboard or in the added card perform very similarly. I've done um, other tests on a two port, NEC, and the uh, performance was worse. All right. So let's get into what the install looks like. Rather straightforward. This version 3.02.19, I should remind you, just comes straight from ASRock's website down here in the utility section, right there. Okay, it tells me to disconnect the USB hard drive and then connect it again. What I have discovered um, is that if you unplug it from the port it's in and plug it straight back into the same port, I ended up having to sort of exit the utility to work around the fact that it didn't really detect um, pulling it out and inserting it again. That's normal behavior. Now I shove it back in port one because again I want apples to apples. Simple workaround. We just right click, quit XFast, and start it up again. The hard drive spun up and powered up by the way when I plugged the cable back in. Okay, it's asking me to say yes. And there's the XFast utility working in its normal turbo mode, telling me that it's accelerating this D drive. All right, so let's just slide that out of the way. There's no useful settings in here, just language, by the way. All right, um, how do we get rid of that? Okay, so now if we go around here, we're ready for this one. We're already on the high tech. Might as well stay in the high tech. And let me just go ahead and um, run it. Okay, I'll resume the video when this test is done. We'll see if XFast has sped anything up. So far, the numbers look identical. But notice what happened on that second one. Huge jump in speed. I'll just point out, if I had moved the cable from the high-tech, and just plugged it here back in the motherboard, um, perhaps the utility wouldn't have required me to, you know, exit it from the tray and restart it. But I found it kind of useful to show you uh, what the workaround is. If you unplug it and plug it back into the same hole you just unplugged it from 15 seconds earlier, it's rather simple to uh, recover. And no need to reboot the utility. Obviously, it's having a big impact, positive impact on speed without rebooting. And the nice thing is, I'm discovering for the first time here, I have not rehearsed this part, is that... Um, I'm getting a good speed boost on this added as media controller from a third party as well. So I'd say this would be a good reason, um, if adding a controller, to shop for an as media brand USB 3.0 controller if you're already used to uh, trusting XFast. Previous version, 3.0.1 something, uh, I actually had a blue screen after and I saw people talking about that on forums. Um, one incident, I can't be sure that was the reason. I've had very few blue screens actually, but um, uh, the reputation for the newer XFast utility, like the 302 I'm on, I believe is uh, that it's stable. So I'm not too worried about that anymore. Okay, I'll go ahead and resume the video when this is done running. Okay, it's almost done running. I'd say that's a pretty spectacular speed boost. Let me go ahead and get the windows arranged so you can see everything in one view. Okay, the benchmark just finished. This here, this here. That's going to be hard to cram everything on one screen for one screenshot, but I'll figure something out. But anyhow, everything's under 180 here. Everything's up to 250 where I'm hitting some kind of limit on the, um, the external rate array. Okay. 
Well, that's what I'm assuming is happening anyway. Uh, so if I had an external USB 3.0 enclosure and maybe like a, a SATA drive, solid, uh, excuse me, a solid state SATA 3 drive, uh, maybe I'd see different results. Okay, so I'm ready for moving the cable now from the high point back over to the planer. The enclosure came up fine, I believe. Now I go back and look at my desktop. We see the drive again. So that's good. Launching XFast. Get that air. So let's just exit it from the tray. Say yes. And now everything's good again. Turbo mode set. XFast running. Drag it off into a corner. And finally we get to run the last benchmark. Go ahead and resume the video when that's done. Okay, getting ready to wrap up here. It looks like, um, yes, we are getting pretty much identical results. So what does this mean? Um, well, for virtualization, having an added card, I can now control just the USB 3.0 ports on the PCI Express card, um, control them, and put them in VM direct path or pass-through mode. So this gives me full speed ahead with pass-through mode, and I get to use XFast as well. And uh, I don't see any reason um, XFast wouldn't install on a virtual machine as well. I'll actually try that next in pass-through mode. That's a wrap, really. Let's see if I can get these to show all in one. So here's top. About 173 for writes and about 190-something for reads, both sides. And that just leaps up to... 250 all the way down to really small file sizes. So clearly this XFast USB utility is doing something particularly for small I.O. And given I plan to do robocopy and copy a lot of files, big and small, the speed boost, that's significant enough that I'll try it. Hopefully you found this video useful and helpful. Thank you for watching.